Revelation 6-2 I looked, and there before me was a white horse. Its rider held a bow, and he was given a crown, and he rode out as a conqueror, bent on conquest. Genesis 9-27 And the Most High shall enlarge Japheth. Now history has proven that the most successful race or group of people at conquering different nations, territory, and even cultures has been the white race. Beginning with the Greek Empire of Alexander the Great and the Roman Julius Caesar, the British Empire which spread the English language throughout the entire world, and presently the American Empire created out of the 13 colonies of white Freemasons. This is no speculation or theory. This is historical fact and conclusive evidence showing the Hebrew scriptures are accurate. The current empire of America arose out of rebellion from the British Empire through Revolutionary War, then actually had a civil war, and it's been a major key player in both World War I and II, and is presently a major player in the conflicts in the ancient lands, primarily in Iraq, the Libyan Revolt, and now in the Syrian crisis, and it's moving towards a confrontation with Iran and Russia. And this will be our horse. Flying to hostile territory, outnumbered 10,000 miles from home. They want to... In the current white American empire, there is a great and powerful influence in the world affairs. A lobby group called APAC, made up of Ashkenazi Zionists, or simply Ashkenazis. Ashkenazi Jews are people who claim to be converts to Judaism and also descendants of Ashkenaz, a grandson of Japheth. So actually admitting no genetic ties to the Shemites, or Shem. Example, the current premier of Israel, is Benjamin Netanyahu, better and more accurately known as Benjamin Milienkowski, genetically a Polish, white, Russian, Caucasian. Genesis 10, verse 2 through 3. And the sons of Japheth is Gomer and Magog and Madai and Javon and Tubal and Meshech and Tiras. And the sons of Gomer is Ashkenaz. August 2nd, 1919, Saddam Hussein's forces crashed through the defenses of oil-rich Kuwait. In fear of an Iraqi invasion into Saudi Arabia, the United States and her coalition allies poured into the Arabian Peninsula to form a deterrent. A deterrent that would be known as Desert Shield. The result was a series of diplomatic talks, negotiations and counter-negotiations that rapidly declined into a no-hope situation. On August 17th, 1991, Desert Shield became Desert Storm. The conflict was 
witnessed by millions through the eye of CNN and the BBC, showing propaganda of the systematic eradication of Saddam's forces by a coalition far superior in technological, political, and economic power. However, what was little known was that from the outset the war was engineered, controlled, and manipulated by an elite group. A group which had created the illusion of a man with power at the head of a million strong army on the verge of going nuclear. A man who had gained control over one fifth of the world's oil overnight. However, in reality, he was merely a pawn, in amongst many pawns, just a puppet in a grand master plan, with the Gulf War as a well orchestrated stepping stone. The orchestrators of the war were by no means strangers to controlling major world events. In fact, they have done so for centuries. From the shadows, they have engineered every major war, revolution, and recession. They control everything you read, everything you hear, and everything you see. They have managed to indoctrinate an entire populace to their way of thinking, and have infiltrated key positions in places of authority. And it is from the shadows that they have created a new political order, a new economic order, and more sinister, a new religious order. Their ultimate aim is total global domination, and they will stop at nothing to reach their goal. The goal that was outlined in a speech given by former President of the United States, George Bush. What is at stake is more than one small country. It is a big idea, a new world order. However, the origins of this global plan were not created in the offices of the White House. In reality, their roots lay in another war. This time, the year is 1095, and the place, Clermont, France. 11th century Europe was ruled by the church which held a firm grip on the hearts and minds of the people. This power enabled Pope Urban II to wage war on the Muslim Caliphate and crusade in what he called a War of the Cross to recapture the land of Jerusalem. It had been under Muslim rule since the year 637, but in 1099, this rule was brought to a bloody and sudden end. In the name of the cross, women were raped and murdered, children were put to the sword, and it is said that blood ran in the streets knee-high to the horses. Out of this land of bloodshed and terror, a group of men arose. Men that would stop at nothing to get what they wanted, no matter what the cost. Twenty years after Jerusalem was taken, the Dome of the Rock was seized by a group of warrior monks calling themselves the Knights of the Temple of Solomon, or more simply, the Knights Templars. They learned the secret arts of the Kabbalah, an ancient form of Jewish magic, along with its dark rites and rituals. The Jews had learned the arts from the pagans of ancient Egypt during the times of enslavement to the pharaoh and developed them into Babylon at the time of Nebuchadnezzar. In 1307, King Philippe of France arrested them for charges of denial of Christ, homosexuality, and idol worship as well as magic. The Templars had brought themselves back from the brink of destruction and never again would they allow themselves to be destroyed. This time, they would control the country by controlling its kings. And in order to preserve their secret order, the Templars would have to die. Or more precisely, the name would have to die. And the name they chose for themselves was a name that would be known by many, but understood by a few. This new name, the Freemasonry, the Freemasons were not content with power in Britain alone. Their ambitions were far greater. In the years to come, the world would witness Europe and America being plagued by wars and revolutions. These would not be as commonly believed. The spontaneous effects are in fact schemes created by the ex exclusive few driven by hunger for absolute power. All this would take place from the very country from which they had fled centuries earlier and would become the base for their global domination.